This is Father Jacob Bertrand Jansen. This is Father Joseph Anthony Kress. Welcome to God's Planning. Thanks to all those who support us. If you enjoy the show, please consider making a monthly donation on Patreon. Be sure to like, subscribe, and all of that stuff wherever you listen to your podcasts. Here we are, Father Joseph Anthony. How's it yeah, going? Let's, let's go. Uh, it's good. It's good. I think everything's going good. It's a little different setup. We're, we're remote for this episode. So um, yeah, it's, yep. it's nice to be nice and cozy in my own kind of setup which I like. I so, um, for us, yeah. for us, it kind of works. Cause you and I are the one who are the ones who have to travel. Not true. that it's a bad thing, true, but true, have true. to travel to DC. Yeah. They, we record our episodes, most of our content in our studio in, in DC and father Joseph Anthony are the ones who don't live in DC. And yeah. actually mm -hmm. my not living in DC is the reason that we're not in the studio this time because I got caught. Well, didn't get caught, but I wasn't able to get out of New Hampshire because of snow. Yeah, so was, yeah, it was weather oriented. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're so. we're making up for it now, like the good old mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. Like know? the good old days. That's yeah, right. remember back yeah. In, back in the day when we kicked it and we started re uh, doing all these recordings on Zoom. That was a yeah. mess. It was. It's, it wasn't the greatest. I mean, it's all on the internet, told, so it's out there. You yeah. can go find it. Yeah, and truth know? be told, like right now, our our podcast quality compared to others is still a little. We've for us, we're doing great. I'm going to say that <laughs> we, we've had our rough patches. Yo, yo, yeah, yeah. Everybody's got to start somewhere, baby. That, like, that's right. We're fine. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, so what it's we're like a week, two weeks, whatever time out from Holy Week and Easter. So two yep. from the beginning of Holy Week, at, at least and mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. a week ish from Easter. Um, yep. How are things for you? Um, at the time of recording this, I mean, we just finished with, um, what is it? We just finished with spring break and we're like two weeks away from Holy week. So it's, um, there's a lot going on and it's a busy time in the semester and it's a busy time for the church year and with uh, the date of Easter this year. So I, I feel like it's high tide. Like there's a lot's happening right now. Um, but that being said, it's a lot of good things. Like you can see like the preparations um, that the Lord is moving in the in the student body here. And there's a lot of really good things. So I'm excited for it. Um, and I think we're in a really good place uh, for, for everything right now. That's great. That's so good to hear. Uh, <laughs> we're kind of in a same, similar place. I mean, everybody, if you're working on a church calendar, you're kind of in the same place. So it's totally. good. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good place. We're kind of in the... Well, again, as you said, at the time of recording, we're kind of in the pre Holy Week lull. Mm -hmm. So preparation, mm -hmm. like the remote preparations are done. Proximate preparations are starting to yeah, yeah, pick yeah. up today. Actually, we opened our Paschal candle that came in the mail to make sure it wasn't cracked. Something I have to do this. Hey, if you're ever if you if any of our listeners are ever prepping a <laughs> Paschal candle, make sure that that candle fits in the base of your candle of the stand before the Easter vigil. I did Before that accidentally. Week, I accidentally checked like the day of um, the Easter vigil last year. Uh -huh, and if uh -huh. I hadn't accidentally checked, it would not have fit in. I had to carve it down, which is not uncommon. I was going to say, was the candle forgot. too big for the, the candle's too big for the base. Yeah. yeah. So I had to carve that baby it. down to fit it in. Or you have to like wrap masking tape around the bottom of it to like add layers. So that yeah, exactly. it shims something, it, you know, it never you fits exactly right. So. Never. It never does. Yeah. You That's always right. got to do something to it. The memory of that. Oh, you like that transition? I just set us up. Ah, Holy cow. You see that? Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. So let's get to the, <laughs> to the uh, that was awful. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of, of this episode, um, which we've entitled Redeeming Memory. Um, mm -hmm. Something that, that comes up a good bit, at least in, maybe not always directly, but something that comes up a lot, especially in, in chatting with people, whether it be in the confessional or talking about life or whatever, whatever the context is, whatever the setting is, um, our, is, is our past, right? Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. not, and shouldn't be a surprising thing because the past in a lot of ways defines who we are and right. shapes our, mm -hmm. uh, what experiences, encounters, et cetera, et cetera, relationships, all of that. Um, so even though the past is past, it's behind mm -hmm. us. I'm getting very clever today. It's great. It's behind <laughs> us. It, it has in, in many ways, a real hold on who we are. And 
I think that we'll we'll get to it in, in through the course of the episode or as we continue on. But part of part of what we want to focus on and what we want to talk about is is especially what the title of the episode mm-hmm. is, is is redeeming memory because a lot of our memories include painful moments or hurts or like you know even just the sort of effects of our of our sin on our own lives and yeah, yeah. there's there's a lot to be said about how to live and deal with that but also how it is that that grace and our and our lord works on that or does he work on that is it something that we just have to put up with yeah. is it something that we can hope for some sort of change or process or something like that so that's kind of setting up where we are the problem as it were you know the the sort of um mm-hmm. the theme of the episode so i i don't know if other joseph anthony in your in your work and your experience i guess i should speak for myself and not paint broad brush brush strokes and for everybody else but in your experience uh, have you yeah do you come across this are you yeah, are you yeah, chatting yeah. with people about like past memories blah 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 oh, yeah, that sort of stuff cool. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that we have to start off when we talk about a past because we hear it quite often, right? We hear somebody say like, oh, you don't want to deal with me. I have a past. And it's like, yeah, no, no crap. Who doesn't? Like, we all got a past. Or you even see people kind of um, glorifying their past as if like, oh, I had this major conversion. Listen to all the nitty gritty details of my past life. And now here's the glorified conversion. And it's like, nobody really cares, bro like the past is the past and i think that's one of the things we have to remember is like the past is done like you can't go back and change it no matter how bad you want to or maybe you don't but like the past is the past it's done and um whether it's you know sketchy and it's it's somebody's got a checkered past or it's squeaky clean or whatever it may be the the reality is when we look back into the past and we as beings we human beings are body and soul we have a body and we experience you know time and that has a past a present and a future so that means everybody has a past and that means we all experience it and that means that we can't time travel and go back into the past and fix things or change things so our engagement with that reality means that we we have memories of the past you know sometimes they're good ones and sometimes they're bad and we have to talk about how we interact with those but i think the first thing is to recognize is that because our corporality and our humanity we experience time in past present future and we have a certain engagement with that but we can't change it and so yeah, it is what kind of, it is. Yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword here, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. because on as you've described, there's no because of who we are, what we are, how we've been created, we exist in this continuum continuum of time and there's no fast forward and there's no rewind. There just is mm-hmm. and time progresses. Yep. And but it's all and in in that it's the case as you were as you were explaining that um some things about the past are good and great. Um, and some mm-hmm. things about our past are less than good and less than great. Um, but in, in either case, as we, you know, as we well know, and I'm sure everybody listening to you, you, I think the problem or a problem arises or an issue can arise when, mm-hmm. when we, when we live as though we are bound by the past, um, yeah. in yeah, a way absolutely. that, in a way that it becomes a stumbling block or an Mm -hmm. obstacle to to living in the present and i don't want that to become a sort of like cliche of like we have to live in the now in the present but we in a real sense do but yeah we do right yeah we do um i think it's father father jacques philippe i've forgotten which Mm -hmm. book if you if you're looking for i think we've we've done an episode on father jacques we've certainly we have yeah we've talked about him yeah a contemporary spiritual author really excellent but i'm forgetting i've forgotten which which book of his it might be his book interior freedom but i'm not 100 percent sure Mm -hmm. um but he talks in in i I actually think it is because i think in that book he talks about it's about freedom to to live Mm -hmm. with christ and in that i'm pretty sure he spends a little time talking about our relationship to the past and and to the future and Mm -hmm. and part of what he says in that and this is this has stuck with me i think since the first time i i read his book is that is that grace like because god is an eternal present god and 
the grace that he offers us is given to us in the present. Um, mm -hmm. It's not grace isn't given as a future contingent and it's not given as something that exists in the past, but is something that yeah. that is only given in the present. And and I make mention of this because of, of what I said with regard to our past becoming a stumbling block, right? Like we need to there we can rejoice in the things of the past we can learn from the things of the past but when they begin to and this is where i see the problem is that when they begin to mm -hmm. become a sort of focus um mm -hmm. they begin to mm -hmm. be the past begins to become a distraction we've kind of yeah. become trapped by it in ways mm -hmm. um that are that are unhelpful so maybe let's let's talk about that a little bit about yeah, how yeah. how the past can even with good things or bad things can become kind of a a trap a bit or yeah, I'll, I'll leave it. Say we, I don't need to yeah. describe one my of own the description. Things, <laughs> one of the things that I, I find myself talking a lot about, um, particularly in the confessional, is that when we engage with the past, our past, right? Our past, let's say, sins, bad things that we've done, the bad actions, um, the evil one typically manipulates those. And so he kind of represents our past to us as if it has a shelf life, as if it's still currently happening. And this is why I kind of emphasized at the beginning, it's like the past is the past, it's, it's, it's done. You know, there's no changing it. But that also means that maybe there are consequences that affect us in the present, but the action itself or the thing itself is done. And we can talk about how the consequences interact with us, but it's not as if that particular past event thing action word that we was spoken that past sin is still currently happening at this moment right that's a manipulation of the past and so you know we can talk about how we engage with that like in, and i'm talking a little bit about the negative aspects of the past but there's also positive aspects we can recall memories of good experiences right i can recall a memory of a a great um you know let's say pilgrimage to rome that was taken over a certain spring break in the uh in a certain year and it was fantastic and i can recall the emotions the experiences the the church visits and the tours because it was in a certain sense had a certain edification on my faith and so when i hit kind of tough moments i can recall the past not as if it's drawing it up out of like a rolodex as if like okay we're going to re um initiate this event but it's a a recalling as a, an encouragement for the future well at the same time we can recall certain elements of the past not to have them happen anew and again whether they're past sins or things like that but we have to be able to recognize that that thing has been done it's completed and my engagement with it from my memory isn't to perpetuate it like and it doesn't have that shelf life like there has to be that recognition in reality that what is done whether it's good or ill has been completed and now i have to engage with it as a past reality not a present kind of still continuing reality yeah i think too in 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 listening to what you're saying well i should say by the way your cryptic sort of like what mention of Rome, Father Joseph Anthony just went to Rome like last week yeah. and yeah. he's been talking about it, which is good. He should, but it's in the past. So leave Dude, that pasta, I had, I had ravioli with orange cream pasta. It was, or, or orange cream sauce, ravioli with orange cream sauce. It was fantastic. That's, that's a memory I will recall on a repeated basis. Delicious. That's awesome. Good for you. I'm I'm so happy for you. It is cool because Father hadn't been to Rome. You've been to Rome before, but hadn't been mm -hmm. since you've entered the order, or which even you know, not even as a priest. Which as a priest, going yeah. to Rome as a priest is a pretty awesome experience. But that's what he's talking about. So you know, I'm sure he prayed for you all uh, I at did. some I really holy did. space yeah. or place. A but, few um, of them. A few. Of there them. you go. Cool. Um, but as as you were talking, two two things I think um, are important or came into my mind that I think are important to put on the table, especially when thinking about the past. And mm -hmm. and that's I think often thoughts about the past 
I, I don't know. Maybe we do. Maybe it's because I, I guess you'd have to tune into the optimism, pessimism mm. episode, but maybe it's because I'm more of a sort of on the pessimistic, pessimistic side of things. I don't know. Um, but I think the, the things that stand out as, um, as, as what di particularly difficult to deal with, with, with respect to the past. I think that's how I'll put it. Things that are tough, um, mm -hmm. I think fall into two categories when we think about the past. And especially as you and I were talking about these sort of stumbling blocks or like the shelf life of the past, these stand out. And the first is, and I think they go together. The first is regret. And the second yeah. is pain, the pain mm -hmm. of, of whatever might have happened. Yeah. yeah. And I think we have to like name and claim those things, regret and pain, you know, especially yeah. with with respect to the past. I think that if you are a hot take or at least a hot take for me, that if you're a person that says I have no regrets, I think you're completely delusional. I think everybody who's lived life has has regrets or wish things could have been done differently or better. Um, I yeah. think only yeah. a perfect person has no regrets um, and there are very few of those. Um, <laughs> And I think that that the mistakes that we make, whether with whether it's with respect to our relationship with God or others or ourselves, like we regret those and they weigh heavily mm -hmm. on us, sometimes mm -hmm. more often than others. Um, and that fall, you know, what follows in that, too, is this sort of pain in that of whether that's like the pain of failure or mm -hmm. of embarrassment or the pain of 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 regret of some you know something like that and i think that that weighs we're very good at hiding and masking these sort of things and i think one of the yeah, privileges yeah. of being a priest is that you know father joseph anthony and i and other priests we have the what the weighty privilege of encountering these bits of people especially in the confessional or in spiritual direction where the sort of sort of vulnerability is taken off so i think that if you're right. i want to say that if you're experiencing these things or thinking about these things with respect to your own life you are not alone like it is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is a normal and common Absolutely. human experience to engage you were to have these to have these emotions these thoughts about our past our memories about what mm -hmm. has been what hasn't been um and i think it's important to say it's not from the start because we're like halfway through but that it's that, that it's okay mm -hmm. right that it's yeah. okay to have this regret and this pain and it's not so much as sort of like how do i get rid of it but a sort of like what happens next kind of right thing. because as we've right. said we can't erase it you can't go back yeah. and change it but so what happens next how are we to deal with and move forward i don't know if you have thoughts on that yeah I, I have i have basically two thoughts on this one um the first is i think the lord in his brilliance and in his genius knew that this is a normal part of the human experience is that we engage with time including the past and quite often we engage with it with regret and he provides a direct pathway for dealing with our past actions. Um, and that's called the sacrament of the confessional. So like the sacrament of confession, reconciliation, penance, whatever title name you want to give it, it's all the same. That sacrament precisely deals with the concept of time, right? And what I mean by that is that we bring our past sins the things that have been done and we place them into the hands of the Lord in the confessional. And the reason we do that is because those sins are ours. We did them. Like we said those words, we did those actions and thus we, we have a certain authority over them. The evil one does not have the authority over it, but we do because they are ours. And then we place it in the hands of the Lord, who is legitimately the only other person who has authority over the past because he created time, past, present, and future. And when we give it from our authority to the Lord's authority, he then takes it and forgives it. Right. And it doesn't mean it, he erases it as if it, you know, it poof and there's no consequences and we hit the reset button, control, alt, delete. We, we're not talking about that, but he forgives. And so the reason he can do that is because he has authority over time and he created it. So I think that's the first thing I want to mention is like the Lord understood this and actually institu instituted a particular sacrament for his mercy and grace to heal our past. Right. And so that's the first thing to look at. And um, I think the, the other aspect of it is to legitimately talk about how do we heal from past wounds hurts whether they're self-inflicted wounds or maybe 
wounds that we've received from another, you know, um, via traumatic events or, or different elements. Um, there's, there's a real possibility that these things can be healed. I would definitely advise that you have to have a certain level of spiritual maturity um, before embarking on kind of healing memories or healing past um, realities. Um, and I do not advise anybody to do it by themselves, right? If you are, you know, it's definitely somebody who is at a very, very high level of spiritual maturity that can do this on their own. Most times you need to do it with a certain guide to walk you through the healing of past um, memories, um, be them hurtful memories, wounded memories of, of those types of things. So, um, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine and they were like, yeah, like, it's such a beautiful thing to see how me memories can be healed through the grace and mercy of the Lord. But it is super important that it's not a process that's embarked by them by oneself. Like my friend was saying that she was like, you can't do this by yourself. Like it just has to be at a super high level of maturity. Um, but we can do that with a guide and with the right kind of um, coaching and guidance. Um, and I think what we're talking about this is like the beauty of the, um, what's the word, the kind of neuroplasticity of the brain to recall those memories, those pathways can actually be reforged away from having the memories be triggered, triggering and kind of almost, almost paralyzing experiences to being infused with the grace of God and with his presence that they can be healed and that takes some work and you can do that and you can be done with a tremendous amount of grace. And like I said, with the right kind of guides and coaching through it, but in allowing the Lord into those memories allows you the opportunity to retrain your kind of narrow pathways to walk through these memories again, but with the presence of God in them where maybe it wasn't there the first time around. Um, so I think it's, uh, an encouragement to the listeners that like, yes, these types of memories, even very difficult memories, they're very uh, hurtful memories or traumatic memories can be healed in a certain sense with the presence of God. Um, but it does take a lot of work and it, it's not to be done very flippantly. Um, but we can find that when the Lord enters into these things, it's as if he's the light shining in the darkness. Um, and it's, it's the recognition that he heals um, but also he he allows his light to illuminate certain areas of our life that were previously very dark and very painful. Yeah, I think what you said about <clears throat> about the fact that the past and our memories aren't erased, these things. Yeah. Uh, because I think sometimes when we think healing with respect to thoughts and memories that like they wouldn't they don't exist anymore. You know, that's what healing looks like. But I, it's not it's not what healing looks like as we've said no. you know from the beginning we are shaped by our past it can't be changed it can't be taken away mm -hmm. um so he, i we and i'm not saying you're saying this at all it's just an additional point right that like healing yeah, in this yeah. is not the erase the what's the verb the erasing that's not a verb yeah. but you know the erasing of our memories or our past it's not that they're not going to be there it's not that we sort of forget what has happened but as you were describing it's a transformation of 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 those memories and i think what mm -hmm. i like mm -hmm. to highlight or what i like to remind people of or even myself be reminded of is that you know off well i'll say this first right that often i th i think at least it's my experience that memories of the past that might be painful or have some regret attached to them they sometimes like kind of surge to the fore and then sometimes mm -hmm. they're not there mm -hmm. you know like even in unexpected yeah. ways the kind of pattern of their being what like on my mind and I imagine on other people's minds is is sort of an unpredictable thing and perhaps yeah. with greater introspection or whatever I could recognize what it is like what what's causing that or that sort of thing but that's it doesn't matter at least for now but the the reality is that again this this transformation this infusion of, of grace into who we are um I like to I like to point out these two things, especially when dealing with like memories of past things. So it is Christ, as you were mentioning, Father mm -hmm. Joseph, Anthony, like right, that it's the light of Christ that transforms. And it's when yeah. our sins, whether they be the past remnants of our sins and memory or whatever, it's when or th those broken parts of us currently, it's when those parts of us 
encounter the light of Christ, that there begins to be some sort of truth, meaning, um, sanct- sanctifying reality infused into them. And that's the case yeah. with our memories. That's the case with our past. So what I like to re- ask people or even myself is, is when these memories surface, I look, them, I look at them as not as a moment to, f- to be distracted, as you were saying, not as a mm-hmm. moment to let you know, the evil one distract me from our Lord, not as a moment to feel bad mm-hmm. about myself again, or gosh, yeah. I wish this didn't happen, or oh, like I hate thinking, but as a moment to ask two questions. And one, they're both teaching things. So what is the Lord revealing about himself in this moment to you? Mm -hmm. And what is he revealing about yourself to you? Like, what does he want you to know about himself? And that answer could be as simple as like, he wants to remind you of his merciful love for you. That even despite of this thing from Mm -hmm. the past, he loves you. He loves you. And he's pouring out his mercy, (laughs) as Father Joseph Anthony was saying. Like, that's that's enough that's more than enough and you know what is he revealing about you with respect to this past memory i don't know that might be a little more complicated but um in each of it in each of those there's goodness to be had yeah there's hope to be had mm-hmm. not because we're we're going to make ourselves better not because we're worthy of it we're going to figure but because god loves you and yeah. in that comes the healing in that comes the healing. Our Lord never promises to take our crosses away, but he always promises to carry them, to carry them with us, mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. be with us in that suffering. However coming, going, transient might be, however deep or painful or not it might be, you know, our Lord promises to be with us in those moments. Yeah. And 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 this spiritual maturity that you're talking about, Father Joseph Anthony, part of that growth is growing and living in that hope. Mm-hmm. In the reality that the Lord is faithful to those promises, yeah. that he pours out his grace simply because he loves you. And this is where the healing and the transformation takes place, not in a forgetting of the past or like, I will, this, you know, I, sometimes I think of that, like, this is kind of silly, but that, that, <laughs> that spell in Harry Potter where they can wipe people's memories away. And actually, I think there's a really tragic moment when, in, in the movie, when Hermione, when they're going to chase Voldemort and Hermione mm-hmm. wipes away her parents' memories of her, you know, that's, that's not what we're after in a racing of the memory, oh, would, but we're looking I at. I would have after. used uh, Men in Black. I was thinking of that too, but I didn't light. want to yeah. use two examples. Yeah. yeah. So nah. we're not looking for the Men in Black <laughs> or the Harry Potter fix. We're looking for the the Jesus fix. Yeah. And that's on offer. That's on offer. It really is. Mm-hmm. It truly is. And I, I think this is where we get back to like, you know, when I've when I've struggled with, you know, my own past and like trying to figure out how how these this needs to be redeemed. And um it, it I found part of that like you were saying is allowing the lord to let his light shine in those moments but like what a beautiful testament it is to look at jesus christ this man who suffered was crucified died and rose again and yet he had wounds still his resurrected body still had wounds you know he had the marks in his hands and the the um the hole in his side and so what I find is that um, even this new resurrected life, those wounds are not necessarily evaporated, but they're redeemed. And so my own past, whether it's a wounded past, like I said, a self-inflicted wound, or maybe one that I've uh, received from another, but I can look at the wounds of Jesus and recognize that there's even those wounds don't hold back new life. And I don't necessarily need to be one that advertises it. Like, like I said, I, I sometimes kind of balk and like cringe at some people that like, you know, really throw their, their, their past on, you know, kind of advertisements and things like that. And it's like, I'm not sure that's the best thing to do, but I can look at the, the Lord himself in his resurrection and recognize that even my past, my wounds, my hurts, um, do not hold back from new life. And I think that's what you were talking about when you were talking about that we move from pain, we move from regret to hope and living the new life that is done in hope. 
And that's so important. And that's, that takes a level of spiritual maturity. Sometimes that takes, uh, you know, good friends and, uh, good spiritual directors and confessors and things like that. But that kind of transition away from regret, fear, uh, pain to living in hope and new life, which is basically living inside the, the resurrected wounds of Jesus. That to me is where forgiveness and that's where the fullness of hope is with the new life of the resurrection. There you go. Regret to hope. It's a yeah. good, it's a good book title. Hurt to hope. There you go. Or a good mm -hmm. way to end this episode, which is what we're going to do. That's we'll what we're that. going to do. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks for listening to this episode of God's Planning. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, leave a five-star review. If you'd like to donate to the podcast through Patreon, follow the link in the description. We're especially grateful for that. You can also follow the link, the links in the description to shop God's Planning merchandise and to get information on upcoming God's Planning retreats and events. As always, thanks for tuning in. Know of our prayers for you. Please pray for us. And until next time, God bless. Father Jacob Bertrand, would you say that you're optimistic about this subscription appeal? No. Would you say that you're optimistic about anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I am. Um, folks, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'd greatly appreciate it. Cheers.